Hey guys, welcome to this month's Q&A. This month we have questions about why network marketing, the pressure of the last 90 days of the year, and a question about my faith. Um, also, Facebook put me in jail. So the audio for this was stripped from the Instagram Live. It's not the best ever, but I hope you enjoy nonetheless. Welcome to Whole Fit Talks. This is a show just for you, somebody interested in taking ownership of your health, leading your life, and living your legacy. And I'm so pumped you're here because I am another you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing this out with your friends and with your teams. Let's dive into this week's episode. Okay, welcome Instagram. Come on in if you guys want to share out to your teams um, and let them know this is where we're streaming today. Welcome to the live Q&A show that I do every month, typically on the last Wednesday at two o'clock Eastern, where we stream usually on the Whole Fit Facebook page and on Instagram here. Um, I'm Ange Peters, I'm the founder and CEO of Whole Fit, and I'm so excited you're here. And whether you're streaming in live or maybe you're catching this as the podcast recording, um, I love doing this show with you. I've been doing this as a Q&A now for almost four years, and we've had lots of great conversations over the years. If you want to um, see the episodes that have been done in the past, you can go to wholefit.com forward slash podcast. For those of you that are live on right now, since this show today is streaming solely on Instagram because Facebook's not working, it would be helpful for me if you would leave your questions until the end and if you'd write them in capital letters because it's just really hard to, to scroll through and see questions live. Um, thank you for those of you that have taken the time to hop over to iTunes and leave a, re a review or uh, your thoughts on the show because that's actually what helps more people find the show on iTunes and I want to I like to highlight one of your reviews every month while we kick off here this month's review comes from diva.com and she says when you're ready to become bigger than your excuses this podcast is the place to start and is a truth teller she shares her wisdom with a generosity of heart and tenacity of spirit that will leave you flooded with gratitude and ready to take action if you're ready to rise this is an excellent place to start thank you diva.com uh, we want to hook you up with a promo code. So if you would email my assistant, Jill, at teamwholefit at gmail.com, we're going to give you a promo code for 50% off any of my Whole Fit, Whole Fit coaching programs, such as the Beautiful Life Lab or Ready, Set, Glow. I'm, uh, I'm actually going to get into those right now as I talk about some quick updates, okay? I see, Jill, you just hopped in. Facebook isn't allowing me to stream today, so we're, we're solely over here on Instagram. And we'll do our best, you guys, now that my assistant's in the room here on Instagram, We'll do our best to post the links as I talk about it, okay? But what you might want to do is hop over to the show notes for this page um, once this is uploaded to iTunes because we'll have all the links there for you. So before we get into questions submitted for today's show, I have a few quick updates. Um, first of all, I'm hoping that you caught the new product overview that I did about doTERRA's convention. I released that as a video on YouTube and also um, as a podcast on iTunes where I take you through the new products, but not only that, how to integrate them into your health plan. And what I'm encouraging you to do is to create your own 30-day health plan. And, and you might even want to consider doing this on a monthly basis going forward where you make these little tweaks. And I have a free gift for you at the classroom page. If you go to wholefit.com forward slash classroom, you'll see the various ways that you can um, either watch that episode that I did or listen to it on iTunes. And right at the top, you'll see a download button. You just click it and it opens up a four page document. One of the pages in there is your personal 30 day health plan. So hop over there and um, make sure you download that after this session today, because I think that's a really important piece of uh, just how we own our health is making it a priority every month to really tune in and learn some new ways. You'll, you'll learn a lot during that episode, especially the new products that are launching October the 1st, okay? Um, I've also, I wanted to make sure you knew that I created a new um, landing page, a monthly landing page, 
if you go to wholefit.com forward slash monthly, it's going to give you the latest scoop of here's what's up. So here's, here's kind of the key things I'm breathing life into right now. So it's a nice one pager. If you're ever wondering, you know, what's coming down the pike or what programs I'm offering you, that would be a good page to check back every month. That's where I, I will always put the latest. And that also comes out to you um, as Whole Fit Insiders. If you're subscribed to my newsletter, I send one, maybe two emails a month, but that will come out to you that way. Um, and we'll put the link in the show notes for how you can subscribe to that if you want. Okay, a few things coming up I want to make sure you know about. So first thing is uh, I'm running a free five-day challenge, we'll call it, uh, from October 1st to the 5th called the Whole Fit Life Scrub. And this is going to be, uh, it's actually completely on Instagram, so it's great that we're hanging out here right now. I will be popping on from October 1st to the 5th every morning at 10 a.m. Eastern to do a, a live session with you on a specific area of your life that we want to look at scrubbing. What I mean by that is it's an opportunity to really reduce the noise, eliminate the drama, any, any distractions that are coming your way in these specific areas of your life, such as within your home, such as on your phone, in your inbox, in your calendar. I'm giving you a condensed version of the content in the Beautiful Life Lab, and this is a free opportunity for you to engage with this content. So if you would like to make sure that you receive the free workbook to go along with this and, and be reminded when I kick off next week, then go to wholefit.com forward slash life scrub and we'll put it into the comments here for you guys. Um, and that of course leads into the um, reigniting of the Beautiful Life Lab. We are doing the annual assignment starting in November this year. So those of you that are part of that lab group, you're in. Once you're in, you're in for life. Um, but this life scrub that we're doing next week is to give you a little bit of a, uh, some insight into the work that we do in the lab. I would love for you guys to, to join. Oh, quick um, little insider tip. If you are planning to purchase and do the lab with us, wait until next week because I'll be sharing a 20% off promo code just for those of you that tune in live for the life scrub. So just hold off. I wouldn't want to see you pay. Um, and then have that promo code come out next week, all right? But you can check out the details if you wanna go to the Beautiful Life Lab landing page. We'll put the link here. You can see what, you know, more of the meat of what that program is, and you can decide if it's something for you. Um, the other core program that I have that I offer twice a year, at this point, I do it twice a year. I have been now for, I believe, almost eight years, is the Ready, Set, Glow Detox. And that's another thing very similar to the lab. Once you're in the program, you're in. So we, we bring it back to life twice a year and it's coming up again um, October. Oh dear, what's the date? Let me find it for you here really quick. <clears throat> it is running October the 21st to the 27th. Okay, so you can, um, if you head to my website, you'll see info on the, on the detox. And again, we'll put it here in the links for you. Um, the last piece I wanted to mention is I have started a new uh, affiliate program, if you will. It's a new way to partner with me and experiencing doTERRA and sharing it with your community. And every month I choose a couple of new people to partner with and offering them an experience um, of the oils with some, some tools for educating themselves. And then um, just some extra little pieces if you'd like to share it with your community and and go from there. You can decide if you want to become a customer, you can decide if you'd like to continue to share the oils with your community or build a business and partner with me as a wellness advocate. So different ways to choose your adventure there, but I'd love for you, if you would like to be considered for my October or November partnerships, go to wholefit.com forward slash health dash influencer. Okay? Um, if you have questions, please save them to the end because I do try to stay super focused with you guys as I'm going live. So I won't see your questions if you post them right now. Okay, so I'm going to use my, the Facebook queue that I had planned <laughs> to, um, to pull up the questions for today's show. So we have a variety of questions today. Many of these came through the Facebook wall that I thought I could stream through today, but um, can't. So what I do is the Monday before I go live, so in the last week of every month usually, uh, you'll see a queue 
generator. So it'll be a, an image that I post saying, hey, do you have any questions for this month's show? This is where a lot of the questions came from today. So if you're actually, if you're over on the Facebook page, you'll see these questions in the comments. And then there were a few that were submitted via email through the, the podcast button on Whole Fit. okay? So first question comes from Amber. She said, do you use sunscreen daily as part of your skincare regimen? I know it's important to protect our skin from the sun, but is it necessary to apply daily if I'm not in the sun more than an hour a day? Okay, my personal opinion with everything I know to date is that having 20 to 30 minutes of sun on your skin every day without sunblock is a very healthy practice for most people because this is where you're going to receive really key vitamin D absorption in a better way than you could ever achieve through supplementation. Um, on that note, supplementing with vitamin D is really important, especially if you live in seasonal climates like I do. So you want to look at a, a vitamin D drop. I recommend Thorn brand. It's a vitamin D slash K2, and that's going to help it absorb better. But to Amber's question, personally, I don't wear sunscreen um, because if I'm going to be in the sun, I limit my use to less than an hour. Now, what you'll notice is if you are eating a lot of fast food, fake food, it's filled with a lot of oils that actually go rancid, um, such as canola oil, and this will actually affect how badly you burn in the sun, okay? So, if you are a healthier eater, if you are consuming really healthy fats in your diet, it actually works like an internal sunscreen. So you'll notice that you don't burn as easily. Um, and I have fair skin, you guys. I, I cannot remember the last time I used sunscreen. With my kids, if they're gonna be out like in the summer on a camping trip or something like that, then yes, we will use a clean, more natural brand. I recommend you go to the Environmental Working Group to look through the ratings of various sunscreens. Fingers crossed that doTERRA comes out with an incredible sunscreen in the coming year um, that would have you know, carrot seed oil and sandalwood oil and helichrysum and lavender. I mean, I can just see it now, but we don't have it quite yet. So I will make my own sunscreens if I'm gonna be out um, for long periods of time, simply using a base of, um, so a quick recipe for you guys that you can try going outside and I would do just, you know, some 10 minute tests with it to gauge what your natural SPF factor is, SP factor. Um, a base of coconut oil will have a little bit of an SPF to it. And I'm talking like probably less than five, it's not strong. And then I recommend you add yarrow palm oil, which is gonna have that beautiful pomegranate seed oil, the yarrow oil, very skin soothing. Um, sandalwood, helichrysum, lavender, frankincense, maybe a little bit of peppermint for skin cooling, but play around with a little bit. Bottom line, most sunblocks are extremely, heavy word, most sunblocks are toxic to your body. In fact, there's a strange situation happening on the skin with a block on when you're receiving the sun. So you wanna be just really mindful that getting some sun on your skin every day, going for a walk, getting some unblocked sun on your skin for like 20 minutes a day is really good for your body unless you have a specific situation. Um, one note on that too, there are some essential oils that are phototoxic, such as, um, and most of the citrus essential oils are. So we're talking lemon, wild orange, tangerine, grapefruit. If you apply them topically to your skin and then you go out in the sun, you can have a greater chance of burning. So you wanna be careful there. Green mandarin is one, I actually have it in my water right now, um, that turns out is, not phototoxic. So that is one citrus oil that you can use that way. Hope that helps, Amber. Okay, bouncing over to a business question. So Ashlyn says, husband is not really on board with building a doTERRA business and his lack of support is hindering my mindset more than it should. Not to mention, he's in full disagreement about the minimum order I have to place each month. I know I should continue to work on things regarding my own self-development and efforts, but how can I better handle the situation with my spouse? Um, and there was a couple of people that were like, yes, please answer this question. I have the same situation. This is one of the most popular questions that comes through for this show. I know that um, the reason is so 
many of you will experience this in the beginning. Um, it's almost like a gate that you have to go through, okay? So the thing that, there's a couple things at play here, and I always remind people to check in on history. What's coming up in this situation? Has there been a time in your life where you've illustrated to your husband or your wife or your family or whoever you're feeling this judgment from? Has there been a time in your life where you didn't follow through on something you said you were going to do or you idea hopped too quickly onto the next thing where you've taught people in your life that you're not serious about your work? That can come up for people. If that's not what's at play here, if it's just simply a lack of belief in what you wanna do, then it's up to you to show what's possible through your focus, through the way you're spending your time. I think that if you were to really illustrate, like let's say, I'm not sure, Ashlyn, if you're a mom, let's, let's just say you have kids and maybe the root of this with your husband is that he's, he's worried that this is taking away from the family. He's worried that you're spending money on things and, they, and um, he doesn't understand why. You need to be an example of what you're doing. And this is the core of the work for all of us in this business is you, you have to be an example of what you're teaching, of what your business does for people. Be an example of why this is such an incredible lifestyle. Um, when it comes to the monthly order, now that's an interesting one. So I would guess that your husband has never owned a business. From a cost perspective, I hope you guys realize this. Some people need to be an entrepreneur before they start um, building a doTERRA business to understand the true cost of having a business. Most people have no idea coming into this and they think something like a $100 order per month is too much. There's two issues there. Number one, it's that's actually the lowest cost to entry to own a business. But more important, number two, how can you actually be an example of what you're doing as a business builder if you aren't committed to the lifestyle? How? Like, how does that work? And um, I think what's happening here is your husband's hoping you're part of a, a get rich quick scheme, but you're not. You're part of a business that is directly, your growth here is directly correlated to the level of health and self-care that you take. So of course, I mean, to be honest with you, my monthly orders are closer to 500 a month because of all of the things we use as part of a natural, and, and I've shifted that from other places. It's just been a redirect of spending. I don't go to all of the health stores that I used to go to to have to get all of the things um, that equipped us as a family to live a, as healthy as possible life, right? So there's just a lot of questions with this one, but ultimately you have to be an example to um, to your husband, to whoever. I mean, I, you all have someone in your life who's, who's challenging you in that way, right? So you, there comes a time where you have to be the one getting up early before the house does to really show you're committed to the work. You're the one who needs to show your dedication to your health by every month using your tools and with gratitude growing in your health okay let's go to the next question um okay this is another business one i'm not sure who it came from it came through the inbox hey Ange, thanks for all you do i'm so tired of hearing the response i try to stay away from mlms quote unquote when stepping out to share it's so frustrating and I feel like people aren't open to learning because they write it off. Do you get these responses? Do you engage or move on? The pushback can be so draining at times. This doesn't happen a ton, but it does happen. What would Ange do? Um, of course, of course I've had people, if they're not saying it to my face, they're thinking it. Um, and the narrative basically goes like this. Number one, they're borrowing a story from their uncle Tom that he used to tell about that one time he got involved in a pyramid scheme and stay away from all those, right? Of course, they're illegal, right? Now, when you have doTERRA, who is the, doTERRA is the largest network marketing company in the US, soon to be in Canada. However, this is what's really interesting. You wouldn't know it, okay? You wouldn't know it because almost 90% of the 8 million plus people in doTERRA are customers. 
Now, why is that important? Someone tell me in the comments. Why should that matter to you if you're looking at a business? Because what gave the reputation to the network marketing or MLM, multi-level marketing industry, what gave it a, a bit of a bad reputation, rightfully so, uh, years ago, I would, I would even say decades ago, was that it was people who were actually not selling anything but beach money. They were selling this idea of like, there almost was like no product and, and the, the essence of a pyramid scheme is there actually isn't a good product that works. It's all about the business. They're, they're just in recruiting mode. And so what makes this whole thing so interesting is that doTERRA is the largest and yet it's completely a customer focused business with the highest retention rate in the industry. So what we have here, when, when people aren't willing to really look at what's going on, what you're left with is the truth, which is your friend, your whoever who's coming at you with this, they actually have a really difficult time with the idea of supporting a friend in business. I, wanna, I want you to just let that sink for a moment. What we have, so there's a lot to this. doTERRA could only be in this business model. They could only, so I was buying essential oils for years before doTERRA. I would go to the health food store, have no idea what was in that bottle truly, and trust me, they put whatever they want in it. Had no idea what was in the bottle, would get it home and would literally Google, how do I use oil of oregano, okay? And, and be like, okay, I just look at the top hit, try to figure that out. There was literally no community, no guidance, no true understanding of what was in the bottle. How do I use it? What's the story here behind the bottle? Where did it come from? Is this somebody growing oregano, oregano in their backyard and distilling it and selling it at Sally's health food store down the street? I mean, literally, you just have no idea. And so when I first brought doTERRA into my home and I, started, I used them for six months before I started to share them with people, I understood why it had to be in this network marketing business model because that community is so important to somebody, especially when they're first starting. Think about it. Think. I mean, I know a lot of you here use DoTerra, right? What would you have done? You would have, you know, looked up the the number to an aromatherapist in your community who would make you scared to even use the oils. You would look up resources on Google and get every mommy blogger's latest recipe. There would be no true guidance there. Um, so it had to be in this business model. I have so much to say about this topic, but trust me, when you have a friend in your life or somebody who is mocking this business model, they, they don't even understand why it had to be in this business model. And second, they actually have a really tough, they don't like the idea of supporting you in business. It's just the truth. They would rather go to the mall. They would rather go to... Walmart or wherever they do their shopping and they would much rather disconnect from the circulation of where their money's going because the other part of, of within the doTERRA model I know many of you know this when you're using doTERRA you are circulating money back to the farmers that grew that if you want to learn more about this go to source to you.com that that's an important piece too many people today just aren't asking the right questions and aren't playing an active role in where their money is being circulated and how, I would all day long, I would prefer to buy really great products from my friends. I would much rather support my friends and their endeavors because these are people that I love and trust than have to go and do all that work myself when I'm starting over with an idea or a product, right? So if I had questions about the latest iPhone and if I knew that the latest iPhone was sold through a friend to friend model, I would go to the friend that I most love and trust and say, hey, give me the goods, what's the deal? Do you have any eBooks that you could send me when I purchase this iPhone to teach me all about this new four part lens on the camera or whatever it is? Like think about the power of that. When somebody shares with you, hey, when you're ready, here's the oils. I've, I've got, I'm gonna send you a welcome email with the resources to get started. I'll check in with you in a couple weeks and see if you have any questions. Like when you have that, just support there don't you wish you had that with everything that you're trying for the first time that you really don't have a clue about like i have a lot of information in my brain about essential oils and so if somebody comes to me because i it's a practice it's a daily devotion right and and so i'm very 
uh, positioned to help someone when they get started or have a question. But I don't know the first thing about how my car works. And if, you know, if I could, if I had somebody who sold me my car and said, if you ever have a question about it, here's the best resources or come to me or, and here's, here's a book on the inner workings of your car. Here's how, here's why you want to purchase that gas and not this type. You know what I mean? Like it's actually the best part of it. So all of that to say, just wink. When someone says something like that, they truly don't even understand the um, direction that the business world is headed in and has been for years. Um, it's all going this way, you guys. And everything we buy is, is really word, you know, uh, word of mouth. It's really somebody at some point planted that seed in your mind. And then you decided to go to Walmart and give them your money. You know what I mean? It's just, you, you all go through it. I do know that. Okay, next question uh, from Catherine. She said, hi, Ange. Okay, I'm gonna condense it because it's really long. Let me find the meat of it. Um, she says, I've been a doTERRA customer for the last five years and recently decided to do the business. I've started the oil conversation with my brother, who is a urology surgeon in Boston and also teaches at Harvard. His wife is a pediatrician, so it's a stacked couple. And I asked him what his thoughts were when he hears essential oils and plant-based medicine. He was honest and said, waste of money in most cases, and that he initially is skeptical but will be open-minded and happy to see evidence that proves otherwise. So she goes on to say that she shared with him the links that Prime Meridian is doing, which if you're new here, Prime Meridian are the new healthcare clinics doTERRA has started opening, which have general practitioners, medical doctors working in them, um, prescribing not only synthetic drugs, but doTERRA essential oils, all about the very patient-focused model of healthcare happening there. Um, so she goes on to say, he doesn't see many well-designed studies available that support uh, the use in published medical journals. Um, do you have another place we could connect him to? <clears throat> so, you know, the, the bulk of this question is, how do I give the, vo the oils a voice to people that are so rooted in conventional medicine? Um, where, now, the, what's interesting with this question is, Doctors are they're always looking for respectable, well-designed studies. Now, I'm not sure how many uh, conversations are happening between them and the pharmaceutical reps that come in. I don't know if they're truly challenging reps on, well, show me, show me the years of studies on this particular drug before I recommend it. I'm not sure. Let's just let's assume that that is happening. Let's assume that doctors are asking the really important questions of the pharmaceutical industry. And so now they're at this point where they're looking at oils and they, they want to see the same kind of data. So there's, there's a couple of challenges there and what's going to come out of the Prime Meridian clinics, for example, is now we have real patients, real human bodies going into these clinics, forming a body of evidence um, and really edifying the essential oils um, and you're gonna see this pick up at a very fast pace. So while we have this community, which includes a lot of medical professionals, this community is going to wait for quite a few years until the, res the research backs what we all already know to be true. So you're gonna have that um, collective of doctors who they're gonna take years to come on board. And if, you know, in this example, Catherine, you know, you have somebody who's just like got all this resistance there must be an understanding or belief that what they're currently doing is working because the doctors that are the early adopters of this, they're sick and tired of being part of the problem. They're looking at what's going on with their patients, what the data is showing, how everything's on the rise. They're seeing that patient that they first prescribed to five years ago now coming in on five, six, seven different medications because of that initial one. And they, they're looking for a better way. They're the ones drawn. And so my advice to you here is do not force it or lose sleep. There are many people where the timing is just not right. They need, and, and some of you are listening right now and you fall into this boat where you're, you're um, passing off the oils by saying, show me the research. I'll look at them once my doctor prescribes them or I'll look at them once all the research is there. And, and so... I, the one other thing I want to say about the research, I think what we're going to see start to happen is there's a lot of, I mean, you can look on PubMed and you'll find, 
thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of research studies on essential oils. But what are we talking about when we even say that? So a lot of the published research on PubMed or Google Scholar or coming out of JAMA, it's, it's like, what are they actually using in those bottles? Because if, you're, if you use doTERRA, you're very aware that there's essential oils that, that are sold at the health food store or at the mall or at the gas station or at the craft store. And then there's the quality of doTERRA where you can truly trust because of the transparency, you can trust what's in that bottle. So now it's, it's almost like, what are we talking about when we say that we found this published research article on lavender? In my opinion, as doTERRA begins to do more of this work through the healthcare clinics, we're going to see a massive wave of research coming out. Um, and it's going to be really cutting edge and interesting because now we're talking about a pure essential oil being used in the study and not just lavender that they grabbed at the mall. So bottom line, this goes for all of you. Don't lose sleep over people who aren't ready. Okay. It's just, um, it's just not their time. That's all it is. And, and you know, the next wave of people, I'm very fascinated by them. I have, I have friends uh, in my life who still don't use doTERRA. And they would be people that you look at and think they're super healthy. They make decisions around circulating their money in a, in a healthy way. They, they buy organic food as much as possible. They're concerned with what they're putting on their skin and they're still not using doTERRA. And, and so you have, um, there's, there's a little bit of a barrier for everyone when it comes to truth, okay? Uh, and it takes on many forms, but just be there for when they are ready and continue being an example of what you're teaching. I'm gonna probably say that about three more times. I've said it all week. I've been broadcasting so many times this week for various pieces of content. I'm running out of black uh, design shirts actually, which I have found do well considering I have polka dots on my wall and my rock climbing wall behind me here. I've gotta keep it neutral over here. So anyway, let me find the next question here. <clears throat> okay, Anne Marie says, what are your top tips for staying organized and intentional during this transitional time of the holiday season coming up? How do you rock the, 90, the last 90 days of the year? So on that note, I feel like Rachel Hollis has some program. You guys know who Rachel Hollis is? Where she talks about the last 90 days. Um, that doesn't resonate for everybody, okay? Some of you are like, okay, enough with the end of your talk. And honestly, I get so tired of it too. I, I get tired of the, the pressure and the expectations on us this time of year what would happen if you just treated every day like a new day like a fresh start like a, you know doing a little bit better than you did the, the day before or not D you know looking at your process and, and deciding what do you want to fill into today when it comes to your work but I do appreciate the the feeling of a season and um, and just this what it invites us to have a look at and so what I would say my what I really guide through the beautiful life lab is um, just looking at our processes. I think it, it makes so much sense to, to pause and really look at, you know, what are you, how are you doing the do? Is there a better way to do the things that you're doing? Um, where is your time going? Does it really align with your, your vision for where you're heading? Um, and I think that this is a really good time of year for us to take inventory of that and check in and just see, sorry, there's a ton of banging outside. Um, just take inventory of, of where your time's going and decide. I did a, t a call with my team last night and the, my, my number one of the 10 or so things we wrapped up the call with, I, the number one thing is you just have to make a decision. Where are you going? And is where you're spending your time working towards that life? And those are the kinds of questions I love to personally ask myself on a, on a regular basis and, and be honest with myself and look at where I can evolve and optimize things. And with holidays coming up, um, clearer the deck more than ever. So maybe if you're a business owner, like rather than adding a whole bunch more to your plate, really look at where you can move the needle in some key areas, but plan that extra time that you deserve. As somebody who's been... Um, you know, if you run your own business or even if you don't, you guys look at how you can take even more off your calendar and just really sink into the feeling of this season. I don't agree with the thought that you have until December 31st to knock everything out of the park that you said you were going to do this year. I don't subscribe to that idea. Uh, I think it's truly about knowing where you're at, what season of life you're in and making 
higher quality decisions for yourself and where your time's going to continue just moving forward. Um, everything doesn't just stop and restart on January 1st, okay? Like, no, it doesn't. So just take a look at where you're heading and really tune into that energy. Uh, personally, I one other thing I wanted to share here is I really like to think about a theme or a word or perhaps a couple of words as I go into a new season. So something that has I've realized is my word for this next season is spaciousness and support. So I'm looking at making everything I touch go to that next level. And so what that means is when I look across my whole quarter, I realize everything coming into my inbox, every request of my time, all of those things, it's all a no for this season right now because there are things that I am deeply focused on in moving forward. So sometimes just taking a step back and really looking at what you want to get up to in these next few months can help you make clearer decisions with requests of your time based on you know where you're heading. All right, uh, last question that I grabbed and then I'm gonna hop over to Instagram. If you guys wanna, if you have questions for today and you wanna put them in, we'll just do some, some quicker rapid fire style Q&A. So this one comes from Megan. She said, um, and you're the most vibrant, inspirational leader I've had the privilege of learning from. I've, I learned of you through my upline and have been following you and using the oils for almost two years. This has been a transitional time for me as I left the corporate world and have had two babies. I feel called to create Career 2.0 in the health and wellness area and have completed my health coaching. I too, like so many of us, have had cancer directly impact my life and this has lit a fire for my calling which is to support women to elevate their energy so they can live with joy, love, peace, and aliveness. I haven't heard you talk about your faith aside from your dad being a pastor. You appear to be a woman of faith. Would you mind sharing some of your rituals? Do you go to church as a family, read the Bible or pray? Um, thank you, you truly make this world a better place. Thank you, Megan, what a sweet message. Um, you posted this to the Facebook page. Yeah, okay, where do I go with this? So I, I, don't, I don't talk about it super publicly, but um, for, for any of you that have been here for a while, you've probably, you know my story. My dad and my grandfather were pretty well known pastors, uh, not only within our church, but um, globally. My, my grandfather was an evangelist. He used to preach in some of the biggest churches in the world. Um, so I was, I was certainly raised in this very unique situation um, of having these these larger than life um, examples, I'll, I'll say, um, of people who just truly walked their talk and had such a a clear connection to God just through how they lived, and that that really impacted me because growing up in church, okay, which I did as a pastor's kid, any other PKs on live. Um, it gave me a, I would say that this is what formed much of who I am in that I learned how important it was to see the impact of somebody's personal beliefs and devotion, that we could see that through how people treated each other and through just the feeling you'd have in a conversation with somebody, the impact they would have on you, you could truly understand this is somebody who has a daily devotion, a connection spiritually in their life, right? Now, I mentioned I grew up in church, which also helped me realize that um, that's not what makes you a Christian or um, somebody with high morals just because you do things. You asked here, like, do you go to church? I don't. Um, we don't as a family here mostly because I have not found a church that truly resonates and because I believe that church can be in your home. Now the community that you can have through church is, is a beautiful thing. I think it's a really important anchor for a lot of people. Um, but I learned as a young girl the power of asking the right questions and I went through you know through my teen years and, and through much of my 20s I think I really did a lot of kind of stepping back and really thinking about what did my upbringing really teach me because there's very much still a, a void in our world in the shape of my dad. <laughs> he, he died of cancer when I was 10. 
and it was shattering to our family. It was, and, and to our church and to our community, it was not expected, you know, we, we, he was just such a charismatic, like larger than life, like I said, person. Um, and there's not a day, to be honest, that goes by that I don't think about life and death. Straight up, you guys, as a, as a mom, and um, there, there's just, you know, there's so much in this question, but what I wanna share is I, this all came kind of full circle for me when I became a mom for the first time. I think that's when I truly understood what love is, what that type of love is that I believe um, God has for us, is that love where as a child, you know, your child could not do anything that would ever cause you as a, a mother or father to turn your back on them. And I think so much of, of my experience in, in the church growing up was there was a lot of judgment. There was a lot of, um, there was an opinion that I'm better than you because I'm this and you are not. And I love the example that Jesus gave, to be honest. I, I don't love a lot of the feeling within the church, but I'll, I'll tell you this to wrap up this very long response. Every single day, I, I carve out time to tune in and to, um, I listen to my spirit tunes and I, I feel very guided in that way. Everything that I do within my work is, it feels very guided. And I feel a very strong connection to people I have loved and lost. And um, I mean, there's so much that could be said on this, but I don't subscribe to dogma. I don't subscribe to the theory that one person is better than another person in God's eyes. Um, I think so much of what the church is going through right now is, is the realization that the judgment has always come from them as the individual, that they've been judging themselves the most. Whew, this is a big topic. Um, but I think, again, when I talk on this show, when I, when I lead my team in this way, when I say, your, your daily practice, your level of self-care, your, oh, my mom's on right now and I'm gonna cry. <laughs> your, um, your personal practice is on display because of the way that you show up and the way that you impact lives. It matters. What you're doing when no one is watching matters. And the people that I think are truly leading our world from a place of love, it's because they have that daily practice in place. And I'd say, I guess I would say my response to this is you're probably not surprised to hear what I'm sharing with you because I, um, I, I value and, and greatly understand that we all have a purpose and that that's what we're here for, to, to connect on, on a deep level to that and to go through what we do in our, in our life, the experiences. Um, I wouldn't change a thing. You know, we've had, growing up, we had a lot of, um, it was like boom, boom, boom. We had a lot of heavy things hit. And as a child, learning to navigate that, right? I can't, I mean, my mom's on right now. I can't even imagine there's times when I think of her with three young kids and all of a sudden my dad dies and she's left with like three kids living in the country and this big church that my dad was pastoring and all of these expectations and, you know, and, and we got through it. Um, we have a very strong bond as a family and, and I'm so grateful for, <laughs> so grateful for just the heritage there. Um, what a gift. And the way, you know, I think, Growing up, I was a little bit of a firecracker. I still very much am. Um, but, you know, I think there was, because of the types of questions I would ask and the way I would challenge and the way I, I would just show up not caring what people thought of me as a kid, I think there was almost this idea that I was going to be a pastor or something when I grew up. And I think that I have effectively managed to merge two worlds that I care very much about into the work that I do today. So anyway, um, that's my answer. <laughs> okay, let's lighten this topic up a little bit. Um, a third gen evangelist, sign me up. 
Okay, Instagram, do you guys have any, any questions? Um, I don't know how we pivot from that topic, but go for it. We'll do another 10 minutes or so of questions. Lindsay says, what's one piece of advice you wish you had when you started your doTERRA business? Um, that's a tough one. <laughs> one piece of advice I would have for you is to understand that patience is important and this is, this is about helping people and nothing else. Um, and you need to help yourself first. Reverse the order and you'll be stuck forcing a business to grow. If you, if you get up every day and you think, you know, what, who's one person I can help today with this information, you're going to have a growing business. Uh, oh, so many of my faves are on here right now. This is fun. Okay, Andy, oh, that's a comment, sorry. Okay, let me keep moving. Any questions? Best oils for acne, there we go. There's a strong pivot. <laughs> um, what's going on in your skin is a peek into what's going on inside. So what I would say, um, a couple quick things I'll just, I'll just rattle off for you to check in on. How's your water intake? Increase it. You, you likely need to really get things filtering. At least half your body weight in ounces of water. Add the good citrus oil to it. So I have like a Yeti right here. I don't know how many ounces this is. Um, but I add to this size, which is probably 30 ounces or so, I add two drops of a lemon or a grapefruit or a green mandarin to that. Your supplementation and healthy fats are important. If you're not using doTERRA's um, baseline system, the Lifelong Vitality, that's gonna kick everything in gear, help fill in the gaps of what your diet's not meeting. I would also focus maybe even a little bit more on your healthy fats in your diet. Make sure every, every time you sit to eat that you have about a teaspoon of good healthy fat there, whether that's in the form of avocado or egg yolk or nuts and seeds or even just coconut oil you're using that to cook with. Um, and then, you know, as you're working on the internal situation, topically, I would, you need to go through a period of time where you're just, and I'm assuming, um, so you asked, you said best oils for acne. So I assume you're using something pretty clean to, to, to use on your skin. Um, my favorite is the Virage system that doTERRA has. I've been using it now for five years. I love every part of it. Um, so I follow that routine, usually morning and night. It's a four step, it's a four product system. Um, but sometimes I'll, I'll work in just oil cleansing. If you look that up, it's just a nice gentle way to, to cleanse without stripping. And then topically, hmm, you guys jump in as well with your, what you would suggest topically. Purify is a really good blend to go right on the spot. You could also use tea tree, um, copaiba, lavender, frankincense. I mean, the cool thing when you're an oiler is you're, you're nourishing your body with different constituents all the time and your body loves to work with new constituents. So I would even try working in citronella. I'm loving that oil, by the way, it launches October 1st, so good. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's an internal, something internal is going on. Um, Terrazyme is another supplement I wanna suggest for skin clearing. So Terrazyme is a blend of digestive enzymes. It just helps to make sure that your food is being broken down properly digesting properly, absorbing and being eliminated and that things aren't passing through what could be a leaky gut situation, okay? Is Ready, Set, Glow safe to do while breastfeeding a toddler? Mm, depends, I honestly, I discourage doing any type of cleanse program if you are pregnant or nursing because that's not what your body is most committed to in that moment. However, there's great principles within Ready, Set, Glow that you can integrate. We do um, daily juicing, we do, it's a focus on whole food nourishment, plant-based for a week. Um, it's great if you have found yourself crutching on some habits you'd like to let go of. So perhaps your, your daily coffee, um, perhaps eating too much meat, not from the right sources. So it's a really great way to just take a pause. What I would say is wait until your baby is at least six months old and don't focus on reducing the amount of calories you're having each day because it is a little bit less of a calorie intake during Ready, Set, Glow week because in the morning you're doing um, a juice and then in the afternoon you're doing a blended meal and then at night you're having a whole food meal. But for a lot of people, it's a reduction in calories. Uh, how do you start? How do you first start the conversation of oils so it's not so sales focused? Um, make it all about them. So 
my new thing lately is I don't even bring oils up to people I'm meeting for the first time, not even in the second, third, or fourth conversation. I'm focused on just meeting new people and building that relationship. And then when, when it comes around, they learn what I do. So I would say that if you focus on building the relationship first, then everything else just kind of goes from there. Because again, so much of a sales process is about trust. Like I opened up talking about today, when you go to um, somebody who you know knows a lot of things about that certain thing you wanna buy, there's that natural trust there. So I think that's a really good thing for all of us to think of is if, if you are building a doTERRA business, when was the last time you just talked to somebody about life, not, not just about oils, right? It can go a long way. Just scrolling I'm looking for questions that will help more people um, some of you are asking really specific health questions as you likely know I can't get into any type of diagnosing situation here so um, think about how you're phrasing your question if someone says they're interested in oils where do you start them off without overwhelming them the best way to start somebody off is to help them address their core health priorities so when you're talking with somebody about what to start with find out what is their, what's their pain point right now. Do they want to sleep deeper? Is that what they feel is a high priority? Then help them start off with a kit that's going to address that need and move them from there. Um, it's really, it's, it's tempting to want to fix all the things when you start working with oils and support every possible thing in your home. And you probably, honestly, once you get going, you'll, you'll focus on one area and then you'll be so excited to go off into all these other areas and, and address everything. Um, the, I feel like we all do that, but initially, if somebody's overwhelmed or confused, they're not gonna make a move. So what you need to help them do is just address that core priority. So do a wellness consult with them if they're not sure, um, or have them do one of on themselves to identify like what is their core priority right now, and, and then you could build them a, a custom kit to start with that would address that. Okay, let me see. Um, what is one must read personal development book that has changed your outlook? And thanks for leading so many in this space. Oh man, I don't know, I, I have, uh, if you go to wholefit.com forward slash library, you guys, I have books sorted by topic that I've read and loved over the years. I plow through about one book a, a week um, through audiobooks. So it just really depends on, on what season I'm in or what I'm really interested in learning. Um, I, I, on, I don't even think I could say one book. That's a, that's a tough question to answer. What I would say is I'd reverse it and say, think about what you're most wanting to learn right now and go to that library and see if I have books that, that really speak to that. Okay, I have like six minutes left over here on Instagram before it's going to boot us off and hopefully I get back into Facebook eventually. <laughs> um, Okay, DDR Prime. How do I respond to people who say I don't do MLMs? Just writing doTERRA off. Yeah, I actually addressed that earlier, so go back and listen to the recording. That's a common one. With cancer in your family, what are five things you've done to feel like you have given yourself the best chance to avoid getting it yourself? Um, I will first say this. I think that every single one of us at some point in our life has had cancer, whether we realize it or not. I think it's impossible for us to go throughout our day in this world without having certain cells go rogue. Um, you know, there's, again, if you think of the basics of health, the, the quality of our drinking water, the quality of our food, are we really eating food or are we eating fake food? Um, are we, you know, our sleep, moving our body there's these basics but there's one thing that I think is really the root of almost all cancers and I think it's the way that we process our world our emotions the, the lens that we see things through I think that we're going to begin to see more and more information coming out around the link of specific cancers and specific emotions um, for example if you think about somebody who may have bowel cancer you might notice a connection with that person feeling like they can never let go 
of, of things in their life. And uh, Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life, I think is a real powerful understanding of this concept that so much of our health is actually our perspective, our outlook, how we're taking time to really um, play an active role in that. And so um, I'm, not, I'm not naive uh, in this. Cancer runs through my family. And um, so my, my dad died of cancer, baby sister died of leukemia. Um, this for sure is much of my drive in why I show up and share with you is so that more people can feel equipped in their homes to handle what comes their way um, and to help discourage something from coming their way. Um, and so my, I, I, can, I can sit here and tell you that if I was to have a diagnosis tomorrow, um, I would be open to learning what that had to teach me, but I would also confidently say, I'm doing everything in the best way that I know. Um, I'm giving it my best shot. And as a mother, I'm raising my girls in the best way I know how. Um, so far, it's working really well, and I think it's all we can do. There's, we are up against, our bodies are up against a big battle today, and you really do need to look at everything and have an honest look at the, the habits that are ruling. And, um, you know, there are things that happen in like childhood cancer, zero, it makes zero sense, right? Um, and I'm sure there's much that we'll learn over the years uh, on how that even happens. But I think that as parents, especially, we owe it to our children to learn better and do better. And we're always working within that capacity. So on that note, I know we're wrapping this up right now. I'm glad you hang out here. I'm glad we get to learn together. And I, I'm glad that for, you know, some time every month I can share things that I'm learning with you um, as somebody, somebody playing an active role in my own health. Um, I learn, apply, and teach. So anyway, yes, know better, do better. That's right. Okay, listen, here's what's up. The audio of this will not be all that awesome but I will grab this, I'll upload it to iTunes. It's too bad that Facebook put me in jail today. <laughs> um, you might wanna to subscribe to my newsletter in case that becomes a permanent thing one day. But uh, anyway, I will get this uploaded to YouTube as well using this recording. Thank you guys for tuning in live. The one other thing I was gonna let you know is our next broadcast, which ideally by that point will be on Facebook as well, will be Wednesday, November 23rd, and then we won't be doing one in December. So, hope you can join live. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you for your questions. Nice to hang out with you. Um, and I'll see you guys November 23rd. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you liked the content, please consider hopping over to iTunes and leaving a review so that more people can find this show. If you have a question or a topic suggestion for future shows, head over to wholefit.com forward slash pod question. You can also find all past episodes and show notes at wholefit.com forward slash podcast. See you next time.